Hello and welcome to another Supervisor Lite tutorial video. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use Supervisor Lite for easy and intuitive post-processing with the validation tool. The validation tool is a new feature with Supervisor Lite and I'm very excited to show you how to use that for highest reliability for your dosimetry measurements. In order to begin post-processing, we need to choose the file from the drop-down list here. In our case, we are using L7, which is the file we've been using all along for these tutorials. Now, in order to start this, we simply click on it and go to the new post-processing session button. By clicking this button, we will open up a new window here, and here we can choose the template. Now, in order to get a good flow for this video, we're just going to go ahead with the default template, which all of you are going to have. We will talk a little bit about how to import and export templates later on in a future video. In order to start using the validation tool, we must check this box right here, and then just click start to begin the session. Since I chose the validation tool as an option, I will be presented with the logger results with the validation tool toolbox right here on the left hand side. Now in the next couple of minutes, I'm going to try to make you familiar with what we have tried to achieve by adding this validation tool to the software. Svantec devices, Svantec dosimeters can register three types of events. We have the audio event, we have the no motion event, and we have the high vibration event. Now, the audio event is something that you need to pre-configure in the configuration stage. In my example and uh, approach I highly recommend, I have set an audio recording to be triggered every time we pass a threshold of 85 dB. Now, I've done that because I am most interested in the ACGIH approach to the noise dosimetry. And the ACGIH states that every time you pass 85 dB, you will start to accumulate a noise dosage. So every time I pass 85 dB, I want to measure the noise for at least 10 seconds to be sure that the noise I am measuring and the noise that is creating the noise dose is actually a valid source of noise. Now, using the validation tool, I can easily see the type of event, the duration, and also the additional dose and LAQ that I'm getting from this part right here. And obviously, in order to be able to verify if this is valid noise that I want to include in my do noise dosimetry session, I need to listen to it. I can easily do that by clicking this button right here. So let's go ahead and listen. Well, I can quickly establish that this noise is valid. We're clearly hearing that this is construction noise, whether a drill or a saw being used in a real life scenario. So as you can see here, it's already green, the green indicating that's already included. I can hit the accept button one more time if I want to, but I won't do anything. Well, let's move on to the next event, the no motion event. No motion, is a very interesting event and something that Svantec dosimeters can measure. A no motion marker like the one we're seeing here is triggered when the dosimeter is not worn. Now, how can we tell that the dosimeter is not worn? The Svantec dosimeters have an integrated vibration sensor. This vibration sensor can detect the slightest movement so even when we have a stationary worker, let's say sitting by a desk, the vibration sensor will pick up the movement of this worker's chest and will notice that the dosimeter was worn. But in the event of the dosimeter being put inside of a locker, on a desk or somewhere where it's not being worn, a no motion marker will be triggered. Now, per my opinion, if something is not worn, then that means that the dose being measured is actually not a dose that the worker was exposed to. So I'm gonna go ahead and exclude the no motion from my survey. Then I move on to the next event by clicking this right hand button here, and I have another audio event. Let's listen to that. So again, I can hear is the jackhammer, 
I see it's already accepted, so I'm just gonna go ahead and skip forward. What I see next is a high vibration level. This high vibration level marker is a very important tool for any health and safety professional. What this shows us is a marker that was triggered when the vibration sensor inside of the dosimeter was exposed to a high vibration shock. Probably something like the worker striking the microphone with his hand caused for a very high peak as you can see here as the microphone is so sensitive it interpreted the hit of his palm as a very high acoustic event. It is most critical to remove these high vibration levels as these do not represent an acoustic event but rather a mechanical shock to the microphone which is then interpreted by the measurement as a high vibration. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of them at once. How do I do that? I go here, I choose high vibration level, select all and I just click here to deny them all. You can see the flashing, you can see that are now all red. Now I go back to all events and I continue my work. I'm looking again at the audio event here. Well, I already removed the high vibration, but it's still no valid noise here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove that. And I can go on, go on, go on like this, remove all of the things I do not want to have here. I'm not gonna go through the entire session here. I do know that we have some invalid noise here in the end. So let's listen to that. So in, in here we have uh, a radio song. So probably in our scenario, the dosimeter was being worn next to a speaker. Perhaps you as a health and safety professional do, do, do not consider this a valid noise source. The uh, worker should not have been exposing the dosimeter to another noise source like the radio because this is not part of his work. So I'm gonna go and remove that. I, I see that as non-valid noise. So. If you've done all of this, let's assume we've just gone through all of this, we have denied and, and, and accepted certain events, and we have now done what we call a validation of the data. We have now removed all the invalid noise sources, left all the valid noise sources, and we can be sure that whatever we have left is valid noise that we want to use for our noise dosimetry survey. So having done that, we now want to calculate the new noise dose. How do we do that? We go here to the add panel section and we find the noise dose TWA section. Double click on that in order to add this panel to your calculation sheet. Straight away, you see that we are using the validated data. Now the measurement time of the L7, as you can see here, was actually 11 minutes 44 seconds. But we are only using measurement time 9 minutes 50 seconds because that is the data that we have left. So we're now interpolating that into an eight hour period. And we know that if we the noise we experienced under nine minutes and 50 seconds would have been the same noise level we have had for eight hours, the dose contribution of that would be 8%. However, that is in accordance to OSHA HC. If I want to the ACGIH, I need to click here. I can see that for the ACGIH, the validated data would yield a 16.5 dose contribution. Now, obviously, this is pretty low. So if I would like, for example, to calculate what kind of hearing protectors I should be using, which I also can do from the add panel here by double clicking here, the noise level is pretty low. So it will be hard to find any protectors that you would need to use. Yet again, let's compare protectors. Well, you can see that we don't really have any that we can add. Now with Supervised Light, we have added a whole database of the most used protectors that you can check. In order to find those protectors, you can click here and compare protectors, and you can simply find the protectors good for that job. So let's assume we're just gonna leave that risk of overprotection. Well, all right, let's put that in our report. So as any of you occupational health experts, what the end game here is, is a report. Now I want to show you something in connection with the validation tool. You can actually mark in the report which noise data you have included and which noise data you have excluded. You do that by going to the report options and scrolling down here. 
highlighted validated re highlight validated regions in report accepted rejected so this means that if i only have rejected i will highlight in the report whatever i have rejected or i can do both accepted and rejected let's go ahead and just do rejected close that and generate report As you can see here, we have our report, we have all our instrument configuration from the start and the logger result. In the logger result, the red markings show where the data has been ex um, uh, excluded from the measurement. Scrolling down, you can see the validated data. You can see the noise dose contribution in according to ACGIH. And you can also see that hearing protectors will not be required. So if we're considering a 3M100, 1100, that there is going to be a risk of overprotection, meaning simply we have such a low, low noise source here that we do not require to wear hearing protections. So that was a little bit about the supervised light sessions and the supervised light uh, post-processing tool of validation. If you need any further help, you can contact us at support svantech.com.pl or contact your local distributor. Thank you very much for tuning in and stay tuned for more tutorial videos from Svantec. Bye.